All you're going to need for this class is some space on the wall, some space on the floor, and then a piece of furniture or something that you can use for our shoulder flexion eccentrics. And again, you will see when we get to that part. We're going to get started right off the bat here with our shoulder cars. If you have a ball or something that you can squeeze handy, go ahead and grab that. It is not necessary, but it is nice to have. We're going to do our shoulder cars today in a kneeling position. So if you have access to the ability to sit on your heels in full knee flexion, then please join me here. If you do not have access to this position, please feel free to come up into an all fours position and do your shoulder cars here. Either one is fine. Once you set up there though, I want you to make sure that you're not hammered into extension on this. I actually want you to take your left arm and just lightly press it into the ground to get your shoulder blade to wrap around your rib cage a little bit. That'll help keep you in a little bit more kind of neutral-ish spine rather than full spine extension on this one. And that's where I want you to be for this exercise and the next one that we're gonna do in the same position for shoulder extension. So you'll take your ball, squeeze your ball. We're gonna come across midline. We're gonna come up and then we're gonna start reaching back behind us. And as you reach back behind you, you're gonna spiral that arm inwards. You're gonna pull your hand right down until your knuckles hit the floor, and then you're gonna reverse. You're gonna go straight back as high as you can. You're gonna unwind that arm, and then you're gonna start coming back through across midline, and then back down. So same thing, coming across, reaching across your body, coming up into flexion, maintaining a little press through your left hand the whole time. Coming back down, all the way down, knuckles find the floor, and then you're reversing. Keep your chest pointing straight ahead. Don't let it point off to the side. Once you reach full extension, you'll unwind, and we're gonna follow back through where we came from. Come back across the body. When your knuckles hit the ground again, we'll do our last rep. Coming back across, up, and around, as you reach around, you're spiraling that arm inwards, internally rotating that arm, reaching back behind you, then coming straight down into your side hip. Quick check, can you make sure you're still pressing through that left hand? Then we're gonna come straight back into extension. We're gonna unwind, and we're gonna come all the way back across the body. You can take your ball and just pass it off into your other hand. I'll give you guys a front view on this set. And we're gonna do that exact same thing. So I'm gonna take that hand and I'm gonna push into the ground just a little bit, just to get that shoulder blade to wrap around my rib cage just a touch. And then we're gonna come across. I'm gonna make sure that as I go through this, that once again, my chest doesn't start pointing off to the side. I'm gonna try and keep my chest pointing down at the ground the entire time. I'm gonna reach back behind me, spiraling that arm inwards. And then I'm gonna pull that hand down. Then we'll reverse. We'll go straight back into extension. We'll unwind that arm, and then we'll follow back through again, chest still pointing down at the ground the whole time. Right hand still applying a little bit of pressure into the ground. We'll come back across midline for rep two. You should really feel your pec there. Then you'll start coming up, check with your neck, make sure you're not cranking through your neck, trying to keep your neck relatively still as well as you move through your shoulder, and then reverse. Right back into extension, unwind, follow back through, coming back down. We'll finish up with rep three here, coming across, maintaining that slight press through your right hand, not letting your rib cage go along for the ride, keeping it all in the shoulder, reaching back, winding that arm up, pulling it back down into your side hip, and then reverse, coming back around. You may notice that when you apply that little press into the ground, that you don't get as much range of motion through your shoulder as compared to if you were to crank yourself through extension, that's okay. We're gonna keep our shoulder cars really honest today when we do them. Now we're gonna go right into shoulder flexion eccentrics. So feel free to start with a little bit of a lighter effort on this first set and then as we, as we do our next sets after this, you can ramp it up a little bit more. And this will take a little bit of trial and error in terms of figuring out how you want your body oriented and the, the height of the object that you wanna use. What's gonna happen is I wanna start up 
out of shoulder flexion. It doesn't have to be completely down here, but somewhere in and around this area. And then we're gonna be taking ourselves all the way back into shoulder flexion. As we sit back into that though, you're gonna be applying pressure down into your piece of furniture the entire time. So into your chair, into your couch, whatever it is that you're using, coffee table. You're gonna be pushing down into it as you sink back into shoulder flexion. We're also gonna go palms down with this one as well. You can play with going neutral as well and change it up on the next set. Try both and see how they feel. But when we do it, we wanna do a quick tester to make sure that when we come back, we're close to end range shoulder flexion or even in end range shoulder flexion. So you might wanna be starting more back here. You might wanna be sitting back a little bit more, but as with our last set, I also want you to avoid in this particular class, extending your spine fully when we go through it. And I actually want you to allow your tailbone to drop and tuck under you and bias a little bit more flexion. You're gonna get a little bit more stretch on this backside tissue when you do that as opposed to staying in extension when we go through, again, this set for this exercise in this class. It might be different in other classes and that's okay. Depends on our intent. So again, just do a quick tester. So I'm gonna allow myself to go into a little bit of flexion. This seems pretty decent. I'm gonna walk a little bit closer. That feels pretty good for me in terms of being really close to my end range. When I'm in flexion and then we're gonna come back up, this will be my start position. So join me whatever your start position is and make sure you keep this exercise within your pain-free range. So if you start to develop symptoms at about here, feel free to walk your hand out and be a little bit wider and just cut it above that pain symptom. So make sure you don't sink into that painful range and stay within your pain-free range only. Applying a little bit of pressure down into the box. Again, you should feel that underside stuff working. And we're gonna slowly sit back maintaining that pressure into the box as we sit back and as you allow your tailbone to drop underneath you, finding your bottom position, and then just relax and come back up. No work really needs to be done on the way up. Same thing again, pressing down into the box and as you press down, you're slowly sitting back and slowly bringing your chest towards the floor, finding that end range and then coming back up. Same thing, rep three here. We're gonna sit back over six, five, four, three, two, one. Find your end position, come back up. Same thing, driving down, six, five, four, three, two, one. Find that end position, come back up. Last one here. Driving down through your hands, six, five, four, three, two, one. Find that end position and come back up. I ended up not thinking and going neutral grip on that one. So I'll go palms down on my next one. You can flip flop and go back and forth as well. We're gonna come back around. We're gonna turn ourselves back around or I'm gonna turn myself back around so you can see my right side. I'm gonna grab my ball and we're gonna go right back into the same position that we did our shoulder cars in. So if you did your shoulder cars in this position, I want you to stay here, but now just come down onto your elbow. If you aren't able to be in this position, then please feel free to just come back up onto all fours and you can do this exact same exercise there. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna have our ball. We're gonna do shoulder extension and range rotations in internal rotation. So don't worry too much about the name. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my shoulder blade back. I'm gonna spin my arm inwards as far as I can or internally rotate that shoulder. Then I'm gonna see how high I can come up and we're gonna be drawing little circles here. Now, same thing with this one. Instead of being extended, I want you to think press through your elbow just a little bit to get your shoulder blades to kind of wrap around your rib cage slightly. Maintain that the whole time on the opposite arm. If you're on all fours, again, you'll do the exact same thing, but you'll just be pushing through your hand a little bit. That'll help keep you from ending up here on this exercise. I just want you to bias this position in this particular class. So a little press through the elbow or through the hand, depending on which position you're in. Fully internally rotated. Join me coming up into full extension here. Try to keep that hand as high as you can. Try to keep that arm wound up. And we're gonna slowly make circles in one direction. Pick a direction. Your circle should be about the size of a tennis ball. And you're trying to keep that hand up ooh, as high as you can. I dropped a little bit there. Coming back up. Keep going. 
nice and slow and controlled. No fast circles here. Fight for every degree that you can of height. Then reverse, other way. I lost a little bit, I'm gonna grab it again. There we go. You'll notice yourself kind of slowly losing. Just keep trying to capture the highest point that you can on each circle, on each rep. Keep going, almost there. And give me one more circle here. And then you're gonna come back down. You're gonna pass the ball over to the other side. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the left side. So again, I'm gonna apply a little bit of pressure down through my elbow, just a touch. I'm gonna wind that left arm up. I'm gonna come up into full extension, keeping that arm wound up. I'm just gonna draw small little tennis ball size circles, trying to keep my chest mostly pointed straight down at the ground, not off to the side. Keep going, nice, slow and controlled. Get the highest point that you can on each circle and then reverse, other direction. You're also trying to keep your hand as close to your body as you can, not letting it drift off to the side. Keeping it tight, keeping it high. Nice and slow and controlled, last circle here. And come back down. Now we're gonna come out of that and we're gonna come up to the wall for some shoulder abduction work. So once you come up to your wall, what you're gonna do is you're gonna see how far you can bring your arm behind you and we're gonna be in a split stance here. So I'm gonna figure that out. I'm gonna troubleshoot with my wall here and I'm gonna snug up to it. I wanna be close enough to that wall that when I try to lift my hand off of the wall, I don't get very high but I get there without my chest changing direction. So what I don't want is a lift off by you turning your chest towards the wall. Keep your chest pointed straight ahead and then you're gonna try and lift off, keeping it all in your shoulder. We're gonna do this around shoulder height as well. Once again, you can alter the position a little bit. You can challenge yourself by hitting different angles and or if you have any shoulder pain, you can choose shoulder pain, words. Choose an angle that's pain free for you. So I'm gonna come up to around shoulder height, go into that split stance position, opposite leg forward, chest pointed straight ahead. I'm gonna try and keep myself there. And then I'm gonna see in this position, can I do a lift off? I can and it's quite unimpressive. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher. This is gonna be the position we work in. We're gonna do five reps per shoulder. Big breath in, lock everything in place, lift off, slow back to the wall. Lift off for two, slow back to the wall. Off for three, parachute back. Four, hold, parachute back. Five, hold, and parachute back. We're gonna switch over to the other side. Same thing on the left side here. You're gonna find that angle that works for you where you can lift off without using your chest, without letting your chest change position. Again, should be pretty unimpressive. Big breath in, solidify everything there. Lift off for one, parachute back to the wall. Off for two, parachute back. Off for three, slow return. Four, slow return. And five, slow return.